Good morning, everybody. It's Daybreak at i Fiber one I'm Jeff Slakey. Hope you're having a good start to your day. i got three great guests in studio with me here today from the Mason County Sheriff's Office. we got uh, Mason County Sheriff Casey Salisbury, Jail Chief Kevin Hansen, Under Sheriff Jim Barrett, which means we're getting down to business today. we got the the heavy in here. How you doing, Jim? I'm well, thank you. Happy holidays. It's been a while since we've seen you on the air. Yes, sir. Merry Christmas to you. We've got some things to talk about here, and uh, first things first, um, Sheriff, let's start with you. What would you like to pass along today? We were talking before we got on about the train thing. Am I right in oh. that train conversation where if you see in the light, doesn't matter how far you think it is, do not attempt to cross because you just don't know those speeds. If, if the train's at a distance and it's coming to you from the side, it's almost impossible to judge that, the speed of the train. Yeah. Unless it's already crossed in front of you, so it's difficult. There are a lot of a lot of collisions that take place across the country on, on train tracks and even people trying to beat the uh, arms coming down and stuff like that. And there's, there's, there's a lot of them. If you read the statistics on that, it's, it's very high. You just don't know. He's got to be careful. All right. What else is going on here around the sheriff's office? Well, obviously, there's three of us here today, and we know that tomorrow is going to be, I believe, the final vote on the county's budget. Sure. <clears throat> the challenge for us over this last six months has been we have taken devastating budget cuts in the sheriff's office, and it's going to uh, directly um, involve the public safety. And so we want to talk a little bit about that today and some uh, of the issues that uh, occur because of that in the, in the jail and our staffing levels, as well as on patrol. And so I'll let Under Sheriff Barrett comment on the patrol side. Well, hey, thanks for having us on. And, and as the sheriff said, it's been six months of, of hard work, staff work all the way across the county. But here's the indirect impacts. In the last six months, uh, we're going to be cutting $1.5 million out of our budget. Um, in the mid-year, we were able to absorb many of those cuts through some unfilled positions and, and only a few layoffs that took place. This round, um, it's another 650, and we're not going to be able to be so fortunate. Um, we will be losing at least four out of our patrol division. The configuration at this point will probably be a combination of management positions and or possibly um, some deputy attrition issues. Um, that's going to be difficult. We'll have to realign our animal control position. Um, animal control services will be hurt. We've had a detective working our evidence tech position for the past year and we're going to have to move a detective back to patrol to cover patrol. We're going to move that detective probably back into their detectives and animal control will probably have to start augmenting our evidence. We've got to go with our mandated services. So there's going to be a, a large ripple effect on our ability to deliver service the way people probably over the past 10 years have become accustomed to. Are these services uh, like response to calls? Is that the main service that could be impacted by this or are they uh like with the boating or with the animal control or you know with jack who goes out into the community is it what's what's the separation between those types of important services but more like call times and things like that well we have to make decisions between what is a discretionary service a, a customer service based uh, package versus a mandated rcw mandated and so it'll be a little of both. Some of these calls that'll be impacted will be calls that 911 receives. Um, so deputies now, more likely than not, will be handling the largest number of animal complaints. Okay. So response times to those will even be, you know, pushed back. Um, officer Brewer, who's our animal control officer, she will always be available for the complicated animal cases to provide assistance to our deputies but we need that assistance in a mandated uh, area like evidence. We have to control our evidence. Yeah. Uh, the sheriff's office uh, is mandated to investigate felonies. We've got to get that detective back investigating the follow-up felony calls. So it'll be a combination. Our boating program will probably take more of a response, emergency response profile versus the high level boating education boating safety that we've done over the years so and all these things are tied into grants so we have to be very careful on how we adjust these things so we don't violate the conditions or terms of the grant funding we're receiving so a lot of challenges well, i think the biggest challenge is that that, that that hurtful and harmful to our community is is when you look at our boating safety program a couple of years ago we were ranked the best boating safety program 
and when you cut all these things, those services are going to be very, very limited. Like, like the inner sheriff says, we're not going to have boats just out on the water like people call for this or that or the other thing. Unless it's, a, unless it's an emergency, we're going to have to send somebody out to get the boats, drop them in the water. It's going to be really tough on the response to that. When you look at animal control program, and you mentioned Jack, you know, national recognition for a program, um, it's not mandated. But when we were, when we were recognized, and that was a nationally recognized program, those are the things that, that tend to go away. Um, Sir, and, and that was that was the bullying program, the component right, that right. was the unique nature of that. She will still be allowed to work with the schools, we believe, strongly in that program. So we're going to have to make some adjustments. But that portion doesn't go away. Okay. But it does have an impact, you know, how often she's able. Can she just pop into a class when she was out? That, that'll that be the different challenges. I think well, um, fairly recently, a couple of years ago, a year ago, I had a, a great friend of mine um, who's the sheriff of Pierce County, Dr. Paul Pastor, came down and spoke about some of the things that were happening in Pierce County in the cuts. And uh, they lost basically the exact same number of people that, that we're not going to have either. And, and when I say lose them, and people are going to say, well, you didn't have to do anything. Well, those positions were due to be filled. So, yes, there's 15 positions gone. Pierce County lost the exact same amount a number of years ago. And think how big Pierce County is. And Sheriff Pastor, Dr. Pastor's response to that was this. Um, he called for elected officials to recognize that public safety is the foundation for all, or all sorts of things in society such as businesses, real estate values, and health care, to name a few. Without good public safety, you don't get good, good uh, places to go shopping. People start questioning your schools start, and, and transportation, he noted. People don't want to come there if you're not covering those bases. Um, he went on to say that less is less. Don't expect out of my budget uh, to cut my budget and to get more resources, he said. To the public officials, make up your mind. Do you want and you want to continue what you're doing or do you want services and he said stop pretending you can have both because you just simply can't we can't cover all the bases with what we have we've been stretched in in here in mason county for years and uh, and, and i look at that comparison that they lose 15 out of pierce county we lose 15 here and 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 how much difference that is uh you know on, on a proportionate scale it, it, it's really harmful to us you know uh, I was going to say, you know, this last week I had uh, Commissioner Drexler on and uh, Commissioner Schutte on. I put out the invitation to all the commissioners to come on and talk about this process, which has been tough for them, uh, you know, over the over this past year uh, as well. And it's not, you know, important to know. We guys have you guys on weekly to talk about sheriff's office issues, but all the other departments as well facing cuts and things like that. And so it's a, it's a tough time for everybody in the county. In the last week or so, though. Have you guys been able to come to some mutual agreements to try to put whatever animosity or whatever between the commission and the and the sheriff's office back to to move ahead for 2018? You get a sense that everybody is coming to the table uh, to try to talk to the, about these issues. How can we get? You know, we talk about this every week, and I hear from folks that it's important to, to hear about the issues from the sheriff's department. Uh, but let's work on some solutions to move forward on this. You know, I, I'll, I'll toss something out there, and I'll get started, and I'll let the under sheriff finish. For going into 12 years, 11, 12 years, we've begged for the county to have goals and objectives. Where are we going as a county like other counties? Still not out there. Um, the department heads and, and uh, elected officials are required to turn those in, but we don't, and we're still asking. We're asking today, what are we going to be five years or ten years from now? It, it's really tough to get someplace if you don't know where you're going. And right now, it feels to me like, I mean, they wrote a, a couple uh, goals, I guess, came out, but uh, they weren't of substance. And I really think that, that this county as a whole, or whoever you want to have do it, somebody needs to sit down and put out some goals and objectives for the future otherwise we keep doing the same thing over and over again we we've seen it we've been here long enough now longer than almost any of the other um sheriffs under sheriff in the region we've watched this rotation through our county government been here longer than than, than all the commissioners and watch this roll through like this and we can you can just see the writing on the wall coming again and i would be willing to bet that that probably next year you'll probably see some more areas like that. I, I, I don't know how they're going to correct this and I don't know where we're going. I, it, it's very, very frustrating to see this happen over and over again. And again, I say when I was, I was a teacher, I was a coach, 
And we used to always sit down and say, where do we want to be at the end of the season? Where do we want to be at the end of the school year? So that everybody was going the same direction. And in, in, in very successful or any successful business, you're going to see people have goals and objectives to where they want to go. Because again, like our coaches and our teachers used to tell us, unless you know or have an idea on where you're going, uh, you don't know how you're going to get there. Well, I, I would say to the animosity, we, we tried something different. We allowed a lot of our staff to communicate with the commissioners this year, hoping that, you know, different people delivering the message might get that combination of cooperation going. But at the end of the day, after all that staff work, we still sit exactly where they predicted we were going to be sitting in the middle of the year. So there's frustration in the staff that after all that time and effort, it was almost predetermined that this was going to be the outcome anyway. Um, and I will say one example. We have found ourselves embroiled in issues of, of high litigation that we're constantly working on. And we've been putting in processes, procedures, and plans to mitigate those issues. And they revolve around the jail. We've had subcommittees. <clears throat> we are frustrated because we don't know whether we should be building an incarceration model type of jail system or what society is demanding now, the treatment, mental health, alternative programs, and we are caretakers of the system. You tell us which way we're supposed to go, we will plan. And, and we ask for some significant assistance through mental health tax and BHO dollars to help offset the jail operations, which Kevin is here for. And we are still struggling trying to get a system to understand that that is the predominant that and substance abuse is our predominant problems in the jail, and we're struggling getting understanding. You say, bury the animosity, and I, I look at it. History repeats itself if you don't talk about history and you don't avoid it. And mm -hmm. we keep, a, we're right back to where we were 10 years ago. The challenge, the other thing that I look at is, and it's in, the, it's in the record, it was nothing that we said, but it was predicted by the, uh, the finance and HR director in 2014 that we would be exactly short the amount of money that we are right now. So what did you do between 2014 and 2000? Three years. And they just stayed on the same track. I mean, 2014, it's in the record. It's the December 9th, 2014 board letter, and they predicted these issues. And, and there's parts of our frustration. We're, we're planners. We like to plan, we like to put things out. And when we don't have a goal or objective, and, and, and Kevin coming up from Lewis County continually asks us, why aren't we doing something? So. There's our challenges, is, is mental health is, is the crisis, substance abuse is a crisis, the opioids. We're trying to put in systems, but we've just been scaled back tremendously. It's gonna be a challenge. As late as last week, and this is, <clears throat> and, I, and I know it's been a tough year because it's, they are our business partners on the road for us. But when you look at the way the budget's gone, other counties are done with their budget, they're over with, and, and a number of years in a row, we've gone right up to, I think, right up to the new year, past the date, and still had budget decisions being made. Well, as late as last week, we were advised on, on some things on the budget that we had to change, and, and in order to do that, we, we had to increase our cost to the city on something. So now they get a last minute now they get a last minute bill after their budget's already been planned and over with that we send to them. And I know that it's gonna be difficult for them, but it, it, it wasn't my choice to make these cuts in the way they did and do them at the last minute to, to not be able to, I, I've, got to make the, I've got to make the boat float. And, and when we get cut, we have to pass those expenses on somewhere they have to be paid for. Kevin, we haven't even really talked to uh, you much at all. This We're just about out of time. And uh, Patrice and I took a tour of the jail two weeks ago, but so I definitely want to eventually have a chat with you about that. But uh, are those tours ongoing Tuesdays, yep. 10 o'clock? Yep. It was a pretty, it was an easy process to yep. just come to the door and, mm -hmm. and we walked around and uh, uh, very eye-opening. Uh, I'll just, we'll just leave it at that because we got to get to the news, but we'll have you on before too long to talk about the jail. So Mason County Sheriff Casey Salisbury, Under Sheriff Jim Barrett, and uh, Jail Chief Kevin Hansen. Thank you all. Uh, no visit next Monday. Or the Monday after that, so you guys can take some time okay, off. Okay, thank you. Maybe you give you a little guys a little extra hour to shave or something. Like <laughs> well, have a, I'm just kidding. You guys have a great, great holiday with Kaiser and, and Christmas. Enjoy that this year. And very, very good. All right.